Hey guys, what's going on? David Avalon here with Robert Drysdale for another episode of Breaking the Guard. Robert, are you infected? <laughs> you know, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. Um, you know, it's funny we were just talking about this. Like, what are we going to talk about today? It's like, duh. You know, I, of course, you know, it's everyone's terrified. That's like the big, that's, um, it's on everyone's mind. And it's like this, this momentum is building up. And I'm just happy there's no panic. That's the part that scares me, is the panic more than the virus. Well, it depends where you're at in the country, right? Like, yeah. in Miami, my brother is telling me that you can't walk outside without seeing people wearing little masks and, yeah. and whatnot. I'm like, I haven't seen that yet here in, in Vegas, No, at it's least. been pretty good. And, but at the same time, there's only been one case in Miami from a 56-year-old out of Iran. Yeah. So it's like we're kind of jumping the gun a little bit. I think that there's some of that, but at the same time, from my understanding, we, the, the, the virus does not manifest itself like right away. So you might have it, you might have it and not know it for what, days, weeks, right? So that's the problem that we're not really, um, we're not really aware of how many people actually have it. So right. like, for example, like Italy's got this thing, oh, Italy, everyone's gotten it in Italy. And the reason for that is that the government in Italy started testing for it right away. Yeah. So all these cases start popping out. It's not that when you think about it, why would Italy have more than Spain or France or Switzerland? Yeah. Why would it have that many more cases, right? And it's because the Italian government started testing for it right away. So that would, I mean, that makes sense to me. So what that suggests to me is that the cases around the world are, in fact, a lot worse than, or the number of cases are underreported. Lot, yeah. are very underreported. Yeah. And I'm actually, you know, look, I'm not a doctor, but. I'm only worried about it to the extent where I worry about my immune system being able to handle it because you're going to be exposed to it. The idea yes. that you're not going to be exposed to the virus is ludicrous. Yeah, they just came out, or at least I read on the news, that for one, the virus can be airborne, surviving in the air for up to 30 minutes. So it doesn't matter if you cough and you're covered or whatnot. It's lingering That's in the air. That's not even that long. I thought it would be able to live longer. Well, that's one. I heard someone say three, four hours. But even at 30 minutes, all that means if you're sharing the same room with somebody who has been exposed, you're, gonna, yeah, you're, you're being exposed also. Because I see people like, I, I think I posted on my Instagram, I was in the gym, and I see people wiping down equipment, like extra paranoia and stuff. I'm like, you're not going to get it through your ass. <laughs> like I'm sitting yeah, in something. I saw like, that. I saw it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And nobody's wiping down the weights or the... Oh, yeah. Oh, hand rails. Grabbing with a hand. Your you know? phone. Your computer. Like yeah. everything you touch. Yeah. You know? So it's like, you're going you're gonna to be exposed to it if you're People going to... People don't fully understand how these things work. I feel like that's part of the problem. I'll, I'll give you one. Like, this is the whole... Back, the, the germaphobes, you know? Yeah. They're, they're obsessed with washing their hands after they go to the bathroom, which I think is important. Sure. You're nowhere near as important as washing your hands before you touch your junk because my junk is way cleaner than my hands you would think right it is of course you know like it's under it's protected by layers of clothes well, all day it depends on the dude right because, well yeah i mean for the most part I'm speaking for myself here dave but uh you, you see but you know people associate sweat right with yeah. with with uh with you know um germs germs and it's not you know it's different things yeah. you know your hands are far dirtier than your junk is for sure. So I am far more worried about touching, you know, my, my stuff before I pee than I am. I mean, not that I wash it twice. You know, yeah. I mean, that's, the, that's the polite thing. Because then when you wash it the second time, you're doing it for other people. Correct. Out of, out of respect, you know, out of courtesy to other people. But for myself, I always wash my hands before. Um, I think that there's a lot of, like, so many misconceptions when it comes to viruses and how they operate. I think that we, there's a while ago, I think we talked about this, how the kids in the favela don't get sick. Yeah, yeah. And because your immune system is just through the roof. Like, that's legit, man. They're exposed to so much dirt and bacteria when they're kids that you either, you know, enter the statistics of, um, you know, child mortality rates, which are pretty high in Brazil. So are they going to be a statistic or are you going to have an immune system that's pretty bulletproof, right? Right. So I think the kids that grow up in poverty might have a stronger immune system because of these things. Uh, but, like, that's what it comes down to because I don't think we can stop the spread of the virus. If it does spread as rapidly as everyone's saying it does, and it seems to be the case because in a matter of weeks, it's gone all over the world. Um, I don't think we stand a chance of stopping it unless you isolate yourself, like you said, like you clean everything in your room, lock yourself, and don't leave. I'm not willing to do that. Yeah, I'm not going to stop training. I'm not going to stop living. I will be extra careful about my hygiene and extra careful about my immune system. Those yeah. are the two things that I can't control. But I'm not going to stop living my life 
because you're going to be exposed to the virus. I think that is, uh, I, I think it's, 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 it's the panic that's getting people to think, oh, if I stay away from people, I'm not going to get sick. I'm like, you're going to be exposed to it. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, I, I've read a lot and I've seen different sides of the argument. I'm with you that I'm still going to the gym and that's probably, you know, a weightlifting gym is probably like the worst place to go to. Yeah, if you're that and the airport, yeah. <laughs> contamination, you know, and I, I'm in the sauna and stuff yeah. like that. It's like, you know, it's a disaster for that if you're concerned about it. I'm not worried about being exposed for the same reasons you are, maybe in foolhardy or whatnot, but I don't think that it's going to be an issue based on the numbers. Like people under 40 without any pre-existing conditions. Yeah. I have a very low mortality rate yeah. versus, but if now, if you're in the target range, like 50 plus and immune compromised, it, I would definitely be worried, right? And maybe I would be practicing those if self-quarantine type issues. Like exactly. If, if you're in that demographic, but like it's selfish in a way for people to start panicking right now and like hoarding uh, materials because there's a lot of hospitals now that have a shortage of masks and other protective gear that they would need because people are buying all this stuff up because they want to be prepared. Yeah. And what's happening now, the people who actually need the resources, like don't hospitals, have don't have them. And in Italy now, they're having the issue where they have to choose between who gets to live and who gets to die. And they're trying to base it off age and their probability of survival because they don't have enough resources to go around. Oh. So there is a problem to me with people trying to hoard stuff, you know, because if you're, the chances are if you're not going to use it, you're taking it away from somebody who could. Yeah. So if you're saying you're trying to help prevent the spread, you're actually helping the spread and you're yeah. helping and causing but the mortality to when be it, higher. When it comes to survival, people are invariably selfish. Yeah. Like survival is always going to rank first. The board of it's irrational. Like once, you know, the, these instincts kick in and you're worried about yourself and your family, people behave very irrationally, very dangerously. In fact, that's my biggest fear is the public panic way more than the virus. Yeah. You know, it's people like fighting over water at Walmart. It's people pulling out their guns to break into people's homes and steal. Like, it's an apocalyptic scenario. I really hope it doesn't come to I don't think it will. But these scenarios to me are the really scary ones, you know, because, you know, we've been waging war um, with the viruses for hundreds of thousands of years. It's our number one enemy. And in like throughout history, it's always been bacteria, you know, microorganisms. Yeah. So it's, it's an arms race, you know, like your body's figuring out ways of defeating the virus. The virus, much like our immune system, also changes. It adapts. Yes. So viruses are so hard to catch on to because they're in constant mutation, right? So the coronavirus is like the latest of a, 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 a very old arms race that's been going on, right, between right. ourselves and microorganisms. So we've always survived. You know, we, of course, we have like events like the bubonic plague or that wiped out a third of Europe. But you got to remember that, you know, Europeans in the Middle Ages, they had no concept of hygiene. Yeah. The concept of hygiene. Like, it's difficult for us to understand someone who would go months or years without taking a bath. Like, what? Like, no, no one's that filthy. Like, they were. They, <laughs> the, the idea of washing your hands, they would ask, like, why would you wash your hands? You can't drink water through your hands. Why? That's dumb. They didn't have the concept, right? And they were living amongst rats and other animals yeah. and just filth. So that explains a third of the population being wiped out. Um, it also explains one of the reasons why, in fact, why Europeans went on to conquer the Americas is because their germs were so badass that the Native Americans were fairly clean in comparison. <laughs> you know, exactly. they couldn't stand a chance. What, what the filthy Europeans, they, they, they created super germs, allowed them to wipe out like the competition. But that's, I trust our bodies to handle it. I think we'll be fine at the end of the day. Um, I, I posted, a, you know, I'm going to pull it up because I think this is worth um, talking about. I posted something on my Instagram. I actually got it from Braulio's Instagram. I stole it from him. I didn't give him credit. <laughs> I should have. I will but, say something uh, while you're pulling that up, yeah, uh, which is the spread, right? Like we were, we were saying that they were underreporting. Based on one, that there isn't enough tests, especially in the U.S., there's not enough tests going around for people to get tested. So the only people that are getting tested are people who are showing heavy symptoms that are yeah. going to the hospitals. So that's why, like, if you look in the U.S., the death rate is really high in comparison yeah. to, like, South Korea. And South Korea is one of those other countries. It's super infected. It's that, all over the place. Well, they have, like, 7,000 or so cases, but they have tested everybody. Like, that explains same thing as Italy. And their, explains and their, the and their, but their death rate is also very low. I think it's overall it's like point seven percent over the whole yeah. case. Versus right now, I think the U.S. is like four or five percent. And what's happened is, I think they just made like a million tests that are starting to go out now. But before that, it was like a handful of people getting tested. So the numbers there's probably a lot more people infected that just 
some of them are asymptomatic, they're not showing it, or some people just have mild symptoms and they're just staying home, not going to the hospital. So we don't have all those numbers. So I think long-term is gonna be shown that this is not like crazy deadly that killing everybody in sight. And from what I've listened to different and various experts, they're saying it's, uh, yeah, it's more dangerous than the flu, but it's not like the Black Plague no, coming no, back. You know? No, um, I, I agree. I think it's just an upgraded version of the flu. From I think I read something, I can't remember where I read it, but like it shares some similarities with HIV, which is scary. Because mm. like some of the proteins in the coronavirus seem to be similar to HIV in the sense where like how rapidly it mutates. I think that's one of the reasons why HIV is so difficult to defeat yeah. is because like it tends to catch on to any, any kind of antibiotic you give it very quickly. All right. But anyway, I got some numbers here. So this is, I'm, I mentioned the source because there's so much garbage on the internet these yeah. days. And my, my, the, the primary source is allegedly the Chinese government here. Uh, but the, the secondary source is Brother Steam. <laughs> If it's wrong, I'm really going to pin it on him. <laughs> but, yeah, it's talking about, like, the age group is attacking. It's largely 14% of the, 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 the victims have been people over 80, 8%, 70 to 79, 3.6%, 60 to 69, 1.3%, 50 to 59, 40 to 49, 0 0.4, and 30 to 39, that's us, 0.2%. It just goes down after yeah. that. That's encouraging. I mean, yeah. if you're if you have family in that age group, of course, it's scarier to them. You know, especially if they smoke, if they have like breathing problems, it seems to target those groups as well. Yes. The other one is, three point five percent of people that have uh, contracted it uh, have died, according to the John Hopkins University. Uh, three point five, which is pretty high when you think about it. You know, yeah. but fifty six point six have recovered, and the other forty percent are still with it. So if we, if, you know, worst case scenario, or if this were a metric, 3.5 of the people on contract that will, will die from it, assuming we can't figure it out before that, right? Which is a shitload of people. It, it That's would be, the scary if it, if it was 3%, it would be well, pretty it's, high. It's yeah. a lot of people you know. Yeah. It's a lot of people we sure. know. So that's, it's, it's terrifying in that sense. Um, but again, this, these numbers include a time where people had no idea they had it like these numbers from the very beginning yes so you know it, the, the the there were no prevention methods like i'm 10 times cleaner and last week i've been i've never been so clean i wash my hands like literally every like every like 30 minutes i'm washing my hands you know showering two three times a day I, like i'm kind of it's my way of dealing with it. i'm sleeping yeah. more i'm sleeping nine hours a day i'm trying to force myself to sleep and i got tons of work to do but man like I think that the world leaders would be doing us a huge favor if they told everyone around the world to take a day off and just stay in bed and sleeping. Because that's your best defense, is your immune system. That there's no way your immune system's good. It's the best way to strengthen your immune system is to get tons of rest. That's how it becomes strong. I get sick, you know when I get sick, it's not wrong when I'm, when I'm around sick people. I get sick a lot of times when I'm coming back from my trips. Yeah. You know, and then I'm jet lagged because I land, I gotta go, I'm sleeping two, three hours a day. And you, if you're doing that for a week straight, sleeping three, four hours a day, when you come back, your immune system, on top of that, you're exposed to thousands of people in an airport, right, breathing the same air in an airplane and all that, then yeah, you're gonna be uh, uh, at a higher risk. So that's kind of my way of dealing with it. But like, I, I had a chat with my students today. I'm not, everyone's training. Like I told yeah. people, gym is not closing, uh, unless the government tells us to close. You yeah. know, if there's like a government, like, you know, shut order, down, shut like down, like, okay, we, exactly. They call it social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, like our my my rent doesn't stop. I'm like, if that happens, I'm like, I'm not paying my rent. I'm like, all right, that's fair enough. But yeah. you know, the second my students stop paying, like I can't pay rent. Right. It's not gonna happen either. You know, I'm hoping it doesn't get to that. But like, that's the part that freaks me out, Dave. Is like an economic like shutdown because of this, where people don't buy and they don't leave the house anymore, and they're fighting over food. The only thing we're buying is food, and we're all fighting for it because clearly, if people stop start stocking up on it, there's not gonna be enough to go around. Yeah. So it is, like you said, the, the panic it would be the more dangerous part of this rather than the actual disease itself. So in our gym in Miami, same thing, business as usual, and we're open 24-7. Yeah. And we're doing the same hygienic practices we've always done, which is we clean the mats multiple times per day. Uh, and, of course, every, there's hand sanitizer all around the gym and bathrooms. People wash their hands, clean up, clean the counters, windows, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, you have to, like you said, take care of yourself. And I think that's the best preventive measure, which is being healthy, right? Like you're saying, doing the proper hygiene practices, taking your showers and washing your hands and all that, but also eating right. 
You know, and it's huge. If you're eating garbage all day, yeah. you're gonna feel like crap too. Yeah. And then, and I know from experience, just like you, the sleep deprivation is probably the number one way to get sick. Because I know whenever I, when I was in college, I did all nighters all the time. Yeah. Because I was between running the gym, training. Yeah. Barely it runs you time. down. It just, you can't, I would have to cram for finals and exams. Yeah. So I'd be up for like 24 hours straight. Like no problem. Boom. I think my record was 36 hours. That I stayed up. So I keep track of it. It's like a, kind of a stupid pride thing. Like, oh, how long yeah, I'm up? a grinder, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 36 hours yeah. of that. But invariably, every time after that, stuffy nose, sorts throw, yeah. right? And it's, it's why, it's like you said, you're not giving your body's best mechanism for recovery sleeping and you're depriving of it it's going to start breaking you down it's it's part of the work ethic of the age too we i don't think we've ever worked so much you know like not even our hunter and gatherers day where survival was was we were at the brink of not making it every day of our lives right but i don't think we worked as much i don't think we've ever worked so much we're a civilization obsessed with success so as a result like i feel guilty when i stay in bed you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I, when I'm not, I, you probably feel the same way. Like if, if you're if you work hard, you probably I when I'm watching Netflix, and I'm like, you know, it's like season two of something. I've watched two episodes already. I feel guilty. <laughs> I'm not supposed. I'm like I'm allowed to enjoy my life and have yeah. to relax, but I feel guilty. Um, and you know, as a result, when we stay in bed and we rest, we're told there's something. There's a little voice in the back of our head: get off your ass and go work. But I think that we're a civilization that overdoes that. I really believe that. And I'm, I'm not pointing fingers. I'm more talking to myself here because I know I overdo it too. You know, but we should give ourselves a break. And I truly believe like that is probably the best weapon against this is if everyone just rests a little. Like get some sleep. And because I don't think we can, we can't stop the spread. Obviously, if the, like Tom Hanks has it. They're talking about Donald Trump having it. Did you see that? Because oh, he, he was in a room with Brazilian a, minister. Had to yeah. be a Brazilian. <laughs> and, you know, I can say, I'm half Brazilian before you call me, you know, PC patrol comes after me. Like, you know, I can say, but, you know, he was in a room with uh, um, uh, the minister of some, I can't remember who it was. It was, was something I, I, I was I, watching that. And but, like, were... Trump was in a room with him. So Trump is being tested now, and the results haven't come out. And they're not going to, if he has it, they're not going to give it away, because that would show weakness from the president. You know, they would never, they would yeah, never display that. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I would, if he got it, he got it. If anything. But I, I think that subconsciously that looks like, oh, the country's... I mean, it sends a very subliminal message to the world if our president is sick with a virus that is deadly. I think it sends a message that anybody can get it. This is the truth. Yeah. But, the, you know, the like, matter, but, but public like... relations isn't about the truth. I, I think they wouldn't tell people if he did. But it just goes to show how this thing has... It, you can't, I mean... You can't stop it, man. It's stay healthy, you know. And then you know when and if someone around you falls ill from it, then you know you, you got to st just stick around. Like I, if someone in my family, right, you know, had the coronavirus, I would be. I, I'm not leaving, man. Yeah. You know, I'm excited and try to stay healthy. I want to take care of. I'm not gonna like I'm gonna stop contact with that person. No way. Yeah. You know, you can't do that, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, and like I said, it's very hard pressed to stop that because of how easy, how prolific it is as far as, because it's airborne, right? And that's the thing that people need to understand. It's, it's oh, by spread talking. through little water droplets in your yeah. breath, you know, so like micro fluid. So that's why it can survive in the air for a bit. And apparently on surfaces, it can survive for like three hours or something like that. Mm. So the washing your hands is viable, you know, because this is the source of contamination with your hands, right? Essentially, you're here, you touch something here in your mouth or your face. Yeah, yeah. And now it's getting in. But if you have a loved one in your home that's sick, how are you not going to get there? And unless you're going to be practicing like full. <laughs> no, exactly. Like you're going to a chemical, you know, a nuclear plant or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the mask, this is the reading. I've done some reading on it because I was thinking about buying it. And then I'm, I'm doing some reading on it. And um, apparently it does well. If, if you, if you're, if you uh, contracted the disease, that's when you want to wear it because you don't want other people to get it. But if you have it, it's not going to necessarily protect you. Well, yeah, so pretty much there's different types of masks. Any mask that you wear generally will prevent you from spreading it a little bit, right? Yeah. Because essentially the moisture is getting captured by the little filter. Yeah. So you're not getting those little water droplets yeah, that yeah. the virus lives and goes through. Breathing in is another matter, though, right? Because unless you have those N95 masks, which you yeah. can't probably find anywhere at this point because they're all sold out, uh, those masks are completely sealed and they give you the best protection from being yeah. exposed. All the other masks don't really do much because they have gaps. Yeah, they're, yeah. Not, they're not designed that way. 
because you remember the design for like surgical masks and all that is not to breathe in to a patient that's open because you don't yeah, want to get them infected. Yeah, yeah. It's not about getting infected from them. Yeah. So that's why like people are running for all these masks, like the good ones are gone. <laughs> and the yeah. hospitals are trying to they're, get them. they're actually need it. Yeah, they that's actually terrible. Need it. So at this point you're kind of SOL if you didn't <laughs> prepare beforehand. Yeah, man, like the um yeah. I think what's interesting too now is how events are gonna be handled. Like I don't know if you saw they canceling UFC Ohio. And Pan Am's are canceled too. Pan Am's are canceled too. And they're moving UFC Ohio to the Apex Center here in Vegas. And it'd be like a closed door type thing. No crowd, just the fighters. Which is weird. Very weird. And uh, I know we had to tie this back into martial arts. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's what everyone, it's yeah. only, I can't stop thinking about this now yeah. because it's on my mind so much. But yeah, we, it, it does come back to martial arts invariably. Because what's going to be interesting too is the cursed fight. Khabib Nurmagomedov. It's with, better than me, Dave. Don't feel bad. Yeah. I, st- I, I don't think Khabib. <laughs> I stop at Khabib. Khabib, or I don't know how you would pronounce it right. Uh, and I can't remember his opponent's name now. Jesus Ferguson. Christ. Yeah, Ferguson. Tony Ferguson. That fight is now it kind up of in the air, right? Up in the air. Like, because they don't know what they're going to do with that yet. Because a lot, like, what happened was in Ohio, UFC didn't want to cancel it. But in Ohio, they said any congregation of 100 or more people, not allowed. So the yeah, event center had to cancel the event. And, but if other states start following suit, sure. Enough, and that's what happened with the Pan Ams as well. Yeah. So Did they actually talk about only having the competitors? Someone says that, but like, that makes no sense because every person there is a competitor. There are no fans watching the Pan Ams. Maybe 5% of the people in there are fans. Like the majority of people are actually yeah. competing. But yeah, they, so I know they closed that one off and they canceled another one. And all these UFC events are going to be kind of... And it, Imagine a business model like that where you're an event-based business. It's well, a catastrophe. For, yes, UFC, luckily, I think most of their income comes from pay-per-view. Correct. So, so they, it's a, it's a sh- I mean, it hurts them, but not a lot. Yeah. So, but other businesses like um, other events, like concerts or, I mean, a lot of, like, I mean, economy is going to plummet. Yeah, but particularly for our sport, for example, like all the grappling tournaments. Are gonna oh, all get, of them. Done. Yeah. You done. Can, you're not going to be able to do anything with it, which is unfortunate, you know? Um, yeah, man, this is, um, it's scary, man. Like, I, um, gosh, I was going to, I had like a, another thing that I can't remember what I was going to say now. But, you know, like, I had to tr- cancel all my seminars in Europe. I had all these seminars in Europe and I had to cancel them. And it's like, oh, yeah, because they now they not, it's a travel a quarantine, yeah, it's a yeah. travel ban. Like, I, I canceled like the day before the travel ban kind of thing. And, you know, it worked out. I luckily I hadn't bought my tickets yet. But I have so many of my students from Europe, they were flying to the Pan Ams, they bought their tickets already. Mm. Man, it's expensive. People are like putting money together all year to come and compete and they, you know, they, because IBF is refunding people, but they still, I mean, the, the plane ticket, you're not going to get a refund. For no, that. you are. You are? Yes. Yeah. Really? Can, oh, after the travel ban, because of the travel ban, yeah. right? No, pretty much almost all the airlines are honoring like refunds to flights yeah. because of this, because they know it's a huge circumstance. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's good. good policy on their part. Yeah, I mean, from my knowledge, because I, I'm subscribed to all these different airline miles and whatnot, and I'm getting emails from all of them about their travel policies yeah. and pretty much refunds on the go, you know. So um, in that sense, hopefully, that's being honored in Europe and everywhere. So I, I heard from a friend of mine that goes, um, that, uh, um, and both her parents are doctors, like she's pretty you know, knowledgeable in this regard, but apparently the, 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 the virus does not like heat. Like most, like I think the cold virus is like that too. That's why it's called the cold. You get a cold during the. I normally get sick around winter time. Like that's the change of seasons, right? When, yeah. As it gets colder, that's when I normally get sick. I I don't think I've ever. Now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever been sick in the summer. Hmm. Like maybe I think of the heat, the, the the temperature might have something to do with it. So there's a hope that as it gets warmer, the virus won't spread as rapidly, which is good news. So um, because yeah, always like we think about it, like it is called cold. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I maybe because more people people tend to get more sick when it's cold. The virus is less resilient to heat. Maybe I don't know. It it could be. Uh, yeah. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doc. I don't know. I'm speculating I just at this ate point. One. But uh, but <laughs> but uh, um, I do tend to get less sick in the summer. I've always noticed that. Like the, the the when it gets cold, that's that's normally the season I'm gonna I'm gonna get sick. Yeah, I, I think. Uh, the transition of seasons is also like something that usually gets people to right like spring 
because all the pollen in the air and yeah. it kind of messes people up who have those allergies. Uh, and for me, like sometimes winter, my skin gets dried up because of, you know, the, the weather changing and whatnot. So. Oh, you're in Vegas too. And in Vegas, so it doesn't help. Yeah, that, either. yeah. <laughs> I was just in Florida a few weeks ago and man, love that place. Just everything, everything about it is like the weather, um, the weather. <laughs> <laughs> It's so beautiful, man. Like, Miami's so beautiful. Like, you know, you, you think of Miami as a party town, but it's such a beautiful place. It get, really is. Yeah, the heat gets me, though. Because like, here, I don't yeah. find it. Like, it, like right now, it's great outside, as far as weather-wise. Perfect. Perfect, yeah. And it, for me, for the most part, it's always really nice. The summer here, as long as... If you're in the sun, yeah, it's really, it's, it's You're brutal. indoors 90% of the time. Yeah. It's not too bad. So it's not bad at all. Miami's but, the humidity is brutal. Yeah, I know. it's like being in a sun all day yeah. long. And uh, that was something that people were actually propagating. And uh, I even had said something because I had read something that said that this virus will be inactivated by the heat. Yeah. And I guess they're saying because the sauna gets to 180 degrees Fahrenheit, if you're in there, that eventually inactivate the virus. But apparently that was fake because yeah. the air you breathe in from the sauna isn't 180 degrees by the time it gets into your lungs. Mm. If it was, you would die. It's, the cells in your lungs would not survive. Would, yeah, it would burn. So that has no effect on mitigating the virus whatsoever. So bummer I for me because I, I go to sauna all the time, but I uh, <laughs> it's not going to save you from this. So um, at the gym, obviously, there's been some concern over this. So like, I feel like even the class, the numbers have dropped a little bit. I think people are a little worried, so they were trying to avoid public places. I had a chat with my students. In fact, we're going to have a doctor come over tomorrow at 530 at the gym. Mm. And I'm going to record it, and we're going to, I'm going to post it on my social media later. And he's going to explain a little bit more about it. Because there's a lot of, you know, it, the problem with the, the, the digitalization of information. You know, information has always been problematic because it's, information is biased. When I give, you know, if you, any kind of event, if I give you my, if you get like top three historians of the French Revolution, they're reporting the same event. They have different perspectives. Right. Yeah. So, you know, there's so much information out there that it's difficult for the public, you know, to discern between what is good and what's fake news and what's garbage and what's distorted. Because you can even, for example, like, you know, you can tell a lie without lying a lot of times. You can give them a glimpse of truth and ignore all these other facts that, you know, that would balance this one out. But if you just focus on that one thing, that right there becomes the whole story, right? Yeah, the lie of omission. Yes, yeah. exactly, lie, exactly. It's 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 a form of it's it's not lying, but it's kind of dishonest because you're admitting all these other facts that would outweigh the the one that you're you know you're you're exposing. So you know, I want to bring a doctor to talk about it and like what can we do? And it's pretty basic, but I still think that for people to better understand that you know this is this is a virus. It's, it seems to me just be a much stronger version of than what we have dealt with. But at the end of the day, your body will overcome it with, you know, by by fighting it, you know, with a strong immune system. So just um, it's something for you know for for people to calm them down a little bit because I think that right now what everyone is and myself included, we're all just like very kind of confused and wondering like what's what's next. And I think we should, you know, follow what's going on in China. Apparently, China the male deaths. I don't don't quote me on this, but the male deaths have been a lot higher because men smoke. Yeah. So they're more exposed to it. It seems to attack the lungs. So um, people who smoke are at a greater risk here. Yeah. Um, and yeah anything that you're doing that to weaken your lungs is going to make it more prolific. And that's why, like, I don't know, I don't think I talked about that here, but Asians uh, have a genetic mutation that makes them more susceptible to respiratory viruses. Oh, really? So it's the reason why, like, avian flu, swine flu, all these SARS, yeah. all these things bursted through there. And it doesn't help that, in particular, like you said, Chinese men, they smoke more. Yeah. So they already have compromised lungs on top of this genetic factor that they can't really control. And, and it's crowded, too. You know, a lot yeah. of these super germs, they come from really crowded environments. Like, for example, um, a lot of the um, that diseases that were wiping people out in the Middle Ages, not just the bubonic plague, but like other like things like, like syphilis were, was deadly then, you know, or smallpox, right? But a lot of these things... They came from us living with such close proximity with other people, no hygiene, and animals living in close proximity to uh, livestock. Because now what you're doing is the germs are breeding, right? They're creating super germs. Um, 
and when you have like and, and from what i hear china is not the most hygienic of all places i've never been but people that i have they, and i would agree with that it's, it's right. they're, they're not very clean people right so mm-hmm. and then there's lots of them and they'll eat just about anything and there's you know well, that's so the all, when you add all these yeah. factors you got to imagine a lot of people means a lot of what to a lot of germs yeah so these things and when you have a lot of germs you're getting a lot more mutations than you would get if everyone lived at a farm yeah, I think the rumor is that this thing started in what's called the wet markets, which are essentially open air meat markets where yeah. they have all sorts of wild game and whatnot. And, you know, bats was the one being thrown around a lot, but they also have a, they call it like a scaly anteater or whatnot. And coronavirus exists in these animals, you know, but it was like a different variation. Again, I, I could have this wrong. But from my understanding, essentially, it's like mutated to a form that yeah. it could be taken in by humans. So, yeah, it's a lot of weird stuff there. Like you can dig that. That would you know. make sense because if the virus mutated and now it's uh, it targets humans, um, it would make sense that it would it would come about in a region with exactly you know yeah, an animal that possesses that sort of virus. Yeah, there's a podcast that had a, a viral epidemiologist. I think I got that one. <laughs> a viral expert in other words uh and joe rogan and he was talking about all these things and they Someone had a, told me to watch that like yeah it was I, an interesting you saw it it was good yeah it was good he, he said a little bit on the alarmist side but still uh pretty centered but uh the list of animals that they were eating there is just totally here's the thing about eating animals yeah. though like a hygiene first always regardless of what animal hygiene is, is a, it's you know, the meat is old, that's a problem, regardless of the animal. Yeah. But a lot of that is just cultural, too. Guys, we think of eating a dog as disgusting. Yeah. Whereas, like, you know, for an Indian, eating a cow is, like, blasphemy. You know, so a lot of it has to do, it's not that you could eat a dog. There's nothing wrong with eating dogs or cats. Sure. It's meat, or a yeah. rat, for that matter. Correct. I think the issue is, not that I would eat a bat. I'm pretty open-minded when it comes to eating, but, like, at some point... You know, you got to draw the line somewhere. But it's it's a cultural thing. I don't think the meat itself is a problem. Even human flesh. Yeah. Gross. The idea grosses me out. But in itself, it's not, it would not, it's, there's no danger to it. You could eat that kind of meat. It's just that you would have, um, uh, it's, it's, it's a cultural thing, right? You get exposed to, uh, um, um, I'm sure I was going with this, but like the, it, it's, you get used to eating these things. Like in Guam, I think they eat, I think they, they, they eat dogs too. Like some, uh, this someone yeah. from Guam told me yeah. that, but and in the Philippines, I know they do. I know that in China, they do, right? Yeah, and people, so, that, yeah, I know what you mean exactly. Yeah, the, the same meat way. itself is not, it's just meat, that's all it is. Yeah, we we have made certain animals like oh, privileged animals in a yeah. way where like yeah. they're off limits and it's abhorrent to consider eating them. Uh, I don't have that whatsoever, you know. To me, like uh, a dog's a dog, <laughs> it's a meat, it, yeah. The, if I got hungry, I, it'd go like there's meat on it. You, I mean, I in my I imagine it tastes disgusting. I, but um, it's, it's just me. But I think the case, I'm guessing, is like it's probably lack of hygiene thing and yes. then the, the close They're, proximity to animals. I, I've and seen this mutations. in Peru, Peru as well. And they'll be like in the ports, they'll have these outdoor markets, and you'll see like stingrays yeah. and sharks and all sorts of weird animals, but they're just out in the open, uniced, yeah. and cool. And flies see, are buzzing that's around. That's the scary the part. Yeah. See, like, Mm, it's not where I want to get it, you know what I mean? Because yeah. like you're saying, it's not hygienic, and you don't know how long it's been sitting there for, how long it's been out of the water. Uh, so, yeah, you have to wonder. So in certain animals, just doesn't make sense to me to eat bats, or one of them in particular, because... There's no meat. Well, that, and apparently bats carry a lot of diseases, kind of like rats. Pigeons. Right. Yeah. So these are not things that I'm like, okay, I need to eat this, you know, like especially since you're, there is such a wide plethora of meat you can choose from. Why choose ones that carry so many uh, potential diseases, yeah. right? Like we know cows and with the diseases they have, but they're very easily mitigated. Eating all this wild game and stuff that you don't can't really account for, it's kind of kind of a dicey proposition, you know? So I think from my understanding, they've banned the wet markets for the time being in China. And they have done a good job of, I guess, doing the quarantining, although not kind of draconian in the way I've seen some of the videos where they were literally shutting people in, uh, like welding doors down yeah. and stuff. So that's kind of crazy. But I guess you got that <laughs> communist <Yeah. laughs> country, you could pull those type of moves. But they, they are, uh, I guess, seeing lower incidence of cases per day. So the strategy is starting to work. And I yeah. think 
like uh, some of the countries like smaller like Taiwan and South Korea have also been successful yeah. doing that too. But no, here's the thing: what I don't understand about these quarantines, like, can you act if there's one person in the country, unless you can identify that kind of person and put them in a like lock them in a room where no one has any contact with them, can you really stop the spread? Like, I I doubt it. Like, I don't, I don't think... think it's so much about stopping the spread. Because I, I thought the same thing. I'm like, look, everybody's going to get it at some point. Why are we delaying it? But that there is benefit to delay in the sense that it gives us more time to study it and also yes, more makes, time to allocate resources. True. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because right now, like, if everybody got sick immediately in the U.S. like, like this, we'd be in a, a lot of problems because we don't have enough resources to help everybody. And not to mention if the people that would help you are sick themselves. Yeah. Slowing it down makes a lot of sense. So by slowing it down, they're able to control the flow of it and and figure out, first of all, how the resources to treat people and then also figure out how to cure it but, or at least develop a vaccine. But the thing that people have to understand also is a vaccine is not going to be ready for this one. It's going to be the next iteration of this virus that comes out which would be like next year. Because they're already doing human trials for this, for the vaccine, which is like the fastest they've ever pulled one off. But it won't be ready until a year from now. Well, so like, assuming they yeah. can find one, they still haven't found one for HIV. Yeah. So keep that in mind. Like there are viruses that like, like or herpes or right. there are viruses that we have never been able to figure out. Yeah. From my understanding, this is kind of like a, it's in the family of like bird flu, avian flu, stuff like that. So it's foreseeable that they could figure something out. But, I mean, like I said, it's not going to help you this time around. You, you know, it's, a, it's incredible when you think about it. It's something that is, I mean, we, we're, on the, we're a few years away, maybe a decade away from going to Mars. You know, we have self-driving cars. It's incredible to me that's something that's been a problem for hundreds of thousands of years still hasn't found a solution. Like, I mean, I'm not saying that. Yeah. Obviously, if it were easy, it would have been done already. But when you think about everything, all the things we have achieved over the course of the last you know, 500 years in terms of technology, you would think that we would have figured out a way for things like viruses and cancer. But man, like when it comes to like biology, man, like nature just has a way of figuring a way out. Like that's what a virus is. A virus wants to survive as much as you do. Yes. It's just trying to get by to the next generation. That's, it just, it has the same drive you do, you know? But it's, it's fascinating to me like how nature has the ability to adapt. Right, yeah. like it just costs. Like it's like, no, I'm not quitting. I'm not going anywhere. You know, even like when species are extinct. I saw this. I read this in a book years ago. But the life expectancy of a species is approximately a hundred thousand years, approximately. Right, and after that, like, oh, it's in theory extinct. And I'm going, oh, it's not really extinct, is it? Because it has all these subdivisions. Right, it yeah. it, it, it 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 evolves into all these other species. So I think that's nature's way of just going on no matter what. It makes it to the next generation. If it has to change, contingent on it having time to adapt and change, it will do so, right? It's only when the change is too drastic and too rapid that the species is unable to, you know, to make the, the, the proper adaptations. And, you know, so that's where, like, the scary ones are the ones that are very fast and, you know, like a virus that we couldn't figure out. Like, so obviously there already are cases of recovery. Yeah. The majority, in fact, the vast majority are recovery. So that tells me, it, it, it does relieve me a lot. I'll tell you, relieve me a lot because it, I look at this and I go, okay, the odds of me, you know, succumbing to this disease is, they're fairly slim given my age and I'm yeah. a free healthy person. So still, still, we got to be alarmed, man. It's still scary. Um, yeah, I hope I know. that people don't panic and, you know, stay clean, sleep a lot. I know when I'm at the gym and I hear somebody go, what? I'm like, oh. I, I used to, I never <laughs> cared. Now I do that too. Now I'm always like, so I was on the phone with someone the other day. He's like, oh yeah, I won't make it to Vegas because I'm sick. I'm like, yeah, definitely don't. <laughs> Please don't come. You know, because now everyone who's sick in my head has got this, you know. Yeah, but like you said, the, well, based on the numbers we reported, the probability is extremely low. But then again, we've pointed out that chances are not enough people have been tested. If they tested every person in the country, we'd probably have a much higher case count. You know, so yeah. you don't know who's going to get it, but I'm with you. I think just be healthy, be safe, and you'll be fine. And nothing to panic about, you know. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm living, like, I'm not doing anything different, to be honest with you. No, nothing's changed in my day. I mean, I've always washed my hands. and Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm just more, like, I remember I was at the gym, and I'm, I'm lifting, and I am mindful of how many times I touch my face. I'm, you know, and I'm like, it's impossible to stop that. this. 
You know, I, I have a habit of playing with my beard. Like if you watch this instead of listening, you probably notice I play with my beard. It's, it's, it's a habit, right? And I'm becoming more aware of it, so I'm trying not to. Yeah. Um, so those are the two things. I'm they're like little habits I'm trying to change now. I'm washing my hands more often. I'm trying to touch my face less. But now that I'm noticing, it's crazy how much I do it. Yeah. Like, you're doing it all day. Like you scratch your nose, you know. And no, for sure. And especially when you're working out, because. You're me, I sweat like a pig. I'm always I was, sweating. I was cleaning the back of my hand. Yeah, you're, you're doing this, normally. but then you this is going this, and then here, and then it comes back. <laughs> it comes it's back. on so you. Like, yeah. That's right. To me, it's, like, it's inevitable. I'm, I would be exposed if it's here. So the best thing I can do is just be healthy. You know, yeah. If I'm as healthy as I can be, I'm giving myself the best fighting chance of repelling or overcoming whatever it is. So um, just to finalize, man, are we following what's going on in China? Because like they've been dealing with it for like what a month now, two months. I'm wondering what where they are. I know that John Hopkins, Hop, Hopkins University has like a, a live update. I think they update their website every 30 yeah. minutes with all the the, the relevant data. Uh, and I wonder like what the Chinese government has to say as, as far as because we have some numbers here, but these numbers are probably old. Yeah. But as far as the recovery and what how they've been able to to deal with this because. Whatever they're doing, we should learn from them what to do and what not to do. We should take those lessons and go, um, you know, this is, this is a successful strategy for containment and recovery. And I, I hope that we're learning all the right lessons, too. That's what I'm for, saying. Yeah, from my understanding, that's why they started using what they call this social distancing, which is essentially just quarantining yourself. Yeah. Why they're shutting down all these major events. Uh, I know Trump uh, is saying that he was very proactive when he shut down the flight to China. Said, the travel ban to China early on. Uh, and now they're doing that to Europe. So again, I think that's the strategy that they're they're copying from Southeast Asia that seems to have slowed the spread. You know, because like I like we were saying, it's kind of inevitable that most people are going to get exposed at some yeah. point. But it's just slowing it down so it gives people enough time to allocate resources and treatment. Yeah. But you know, as a younger person, you know, me and you were pretty good and probably most of the people that listen to this but you know like i said if you're older then you probably want to be a little extra careful yeah you know maybe avoid going to that christina Aguilera yeah, that, concert you're saving exactly. up for <laughs> uh, that yeah this that's it people um i still um yeah like i said my gym i'm not going to change anything unless the government says something yeah, I'm right there with you. You know, and we, we're pretty clean about the gym. We clean those mats twice a day. Uh, we have, like, the little, like, hand sanitizers all yep. over the gym. Keep your hands clean. I, like I said, every 30 minutes, I'm doing that. I'm trying to avoid touching my face. And I'm trying to stay home. That, like, to sleep, not because I'm scared of people. Like, man, if I... I take a lot of those ember emergencies, like little vitamin C things. Yeah. Those well, things, you know, the, immune bo- the, the immune system boosters, like, those help, too. Anything with zinc, um, like, they sell these... Uh, particularly like elderberry lozenges, mm. which are with vitamin uh, with zinc, and zinc helps uh, restore your immune not your immune system, your your lung function and respiratory system. So I actually heard a doctor saying those things can help a little bit. You know, if you're gonna take some type of supplement, getting zinc in would uh, be one of the things you would want to get. But yeah, I mean, I'm still training. I'm. Not gonna really stop unless, like you said, government says stop. Yeah. But otherwise, you know, I think we're gonna we're gonna learn a lot more about this within the next two three weeks. I think so too. Yeah, it's gonna be on everyone's mind. Um, But it just goes to show you again how like they I saw in that same graphic, I think it was like info is beautiful, information is beautiful. They were having all these charts about the, the COVID virus and the amount of reporting or mentions this has in the media. It was 1.2 billion in comparison to SARS. Yeah, I got it right was, here. Which yeah. was 50 million. Yeah. So you're talking about like a factor of 20 plus times. Yeah. So, yeah, like we're even talking about it, right? Because it's hard to avoid it. It's, it's everywhere. It, so it's, it kind of makes people. It's a snowball effect. Yeah. But it, it just makes you wonder like how much worse this is going to get over time. As far as not just this, this is going to go away. But I mean, any time a situation occurs, as information becomes more and more available and it's harder to run away from because now like we have phones and soon our clothes are going to have the little readouts and we have our watches so you're not going to be get be able to escape from getting told what's going on so like yeah we, we talked about that before sometimes like in the past people went to computers and stuff like that as an escape from reality and now we need to get out 
yeah. into reality to escape the world yeah, yeah. of computers, you know? So it's, it's kind of troubling to me because I, I think that it's another topic altogether, but it, it's kind of turned free speech into something different, you know, because now like people can say something like the media and you can't escape it even if you wanted to. Like, oh, it's accusation is enough. Yeah. It's Once just like it's that, out there, it's out there forever. I mean, like, you know, love him or hate him, but Trump coined the, the fake news thing and man, it's stuck. You know? yeah, and it, and it, it brings to, it, it was a very easy way of describing a very real and dangerous phenomenon. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And not just in politics, but in everything. Everything. Really. It's hard to distinguish, like we're talking about, it's hard to distinguish what fact from fiction now because there's so much information out there. We don't have the time or the know-how to filter. Yeah, like I, I, I can tell bullshit in jujitsu with a certain degree of confidence that I know what I'm talking about more than most. But you know, with other things, you're less, you're less equipped. You know, so it's it's hard for you to distinguish. You know, you don't know exactly what to believe. Um, you know, I think critical thinking. I think skepticism. Be skeptical. Like I, I love there's a there's a Roman saying that goes qui bono, it means who benefits. Yeah. So you know, when something happened in Rome and they wanted to find out who the culprit is, they wouldn't. Uh, they would start backwards. Well, who who went from who who had something to benefit from this plot? Yeah. Right. And that person is the first suspect. You know. So when it comes to the media, I think that they are biased in the sense where they're a business, and yeah. a business wants to make money. So it is natural that a business is biased towards the people who are sponsoring their business ads in general. Right. So if they're a little biased towards you know large business, I well, you know corporations in general. Like, Look at you, Northern Quilted. Yeah, like it, it, it's <laughs> toilet dope. paper, oh. northern quilted, yeah. toilet yeah. paper bounty. All these people are freaking destroying business right now. Yeah, but the thing is, is it, it's you, you get so you're gonna get biased information. You got to learn how to filter through it, you know. Um, and it, it's not an easy to do because the thing to do because you can look up your facts, but if you're gonna look up your, I'll give you an example. There's like controversies in the history of jujitsu that people go back and forth on, and like you, I can dig into and I can find out what actually happened, and Man, like it takes like a good amount of reading for you to get to the bottom of one little thing, and you can say with a certain degree of confidence, like this is what happened, right? But how many people are going to take the time to do that? You see the problem. Yeah. So you know we have to trust the experts, and the problem with the internet is it's made everyone an expert, you know. And then this is a I I I always liked the um I I was really excited when public when the category of public intellectuals came about, and I was really excited because oh man, finally some smart people. I had it with Kim Kardashian and the idiots, right? Finally, some smart people are actually getting some attention. But that kind of backfired too because now they're experts at everything. You know, you get people who are experts in one field and they talk about that field with a certain degree of authority. And next thing you know, they feel obliged to keep their momentum going in the, in the spotlight. They got to be an expert on everything. And now they're talking about things that they don't, aren't really experts at, right? So they start like, and it, it's, 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 uh, it's difficult for the public because discern because they look at this guy well he's so eloquent and he speaks and he knows what he's talking about and he's a professor he must be right you know and that's those are the best case scenarios we're talking about professors the smartest people out there yeah. right but when it comes to the internet it's become this open forum for i hate to say it i don't want to sound condescending or arrogant but like idiots you know like before idiots were silent they didn't have a voice they were in a minority now they become the majority and they know it so the second you you know you go online it's like you're in the you're, you you've entered the forum of uh, 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 of stupidity because everything is a strong opinion, but it's not founded. It's not grounded. It's just it, it's everyone everyone wants to be an expert at everything, and then when, when you go on the internet, that's what it is, man. If you look at these comments, I don't I don't I try avoid it because it's painful to me. Yeah. But like you go through these threads and you're reading these comments, and I'm like, what, what the fuck are these people? You know, but it's a voice, and that voice is heard now, and it has weight on how other people perceive um, that issue. Because if the majority of people think something, then it must be true, or I have to lean towards this because of public relations. So, for example, you know, when when you open to when you open these issues to the 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 the, 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 the people forum, like the people's you know yeah uh, forum, you're gonna go you're going to be subjected to the opinion of the majority, which is not always the most informed opinion. Um, I'll give you an example. Like, judges are elected. You're seeing all the signs everywhere. Yeah. You know who finances their campaigns? Law firms. Think about that. Yeah. Think about that. 
Now, so a judge gets in there, he is more worried about the public, the, the public uh, he's not worried about justice anymore. Justice is not more in the forefront of what he does. He is worried about the law firm that funded his campaign and the public perception of his actions. Because those things right there are going to have more weight on him making the decision. Does that make sense? No, no. So I, just, I, it's like, it's, that's what's so crazy to me is that once you open up for non-experts to have an opinion, their opinion ends up like having like the... the the, 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 what's the word? Having too much weight, right? My point is, truth is not subjected to democracy, and it shouldn't be. If it's the truth, yeah. you cannot subject it to the people's forum. No, you know? yeah. But the internet has done that, so everything is true out there, right? And it's hard to make separate. It's people. really hard, because I remember, I, the thing I was telling you about the sauna, yeah. with, with uh, the COVID thing, I had looked it up, and I saw there was like a Chinese... Uh, it looked like a Chinese research yeah. paper that was translated. I'm like, and he was giving all these stats. I'm like, oh, I guess this is real. Yeah. And then I, I heard another expert saying that that's total horse crap, and this is the reason why. I'm like, all right. <laughs> no, I, I, if, so, yeah, he's like, how do you know? Like it's like you said that you have to invest a lot more time to filter information out because there are so many sources. You do a Google search, and there's gonna be like 30 different things, and they're gonna have different. And opinions. you're never gonna yeah. read page five. That's the scary part. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Google. Is given preference to as you know to the ones that know how to manipulate SEO, and it may not be the truth. I only go front page one, Dave. I never go to page two. Yeah. I don't have time for that shit. I page yeah. one, top three. That's what I'm reading, right? And then now Google is able to manipulate what kind of information we're getting. Therefore, they are able to control the truth. Yeah, you see, that's that's the crazy thing is that when like it, it's gotten so difficult to get accurate information in the world. Yeah, yeah. I was just watching this series called The Looming Tower, which is talking about the 9/11. And it's very interesting. It's supposed to be based on true facts, but who knows yeah. where the truth lies there. But essentially, the CIA was withholding information from the FBI and a little power play. But at one point at the end, after the towers fall, they capture this prime suspect that they're in, uh, investigating. He's from Al-Qaeda. He's a, he was like a Bin Laden's bodyguard. And they're asking him to identify you know, a certain suspect, and he wouldn't say it. And he was saying, oh, you know, the Quran tells us that we had to expel all invaders, all but Muslim, right? And he's like, where can you show me that in the Quran? And the guy was like blank face. He's like, you've never even read the Quran, have yeah. you? You were just told by somebody, yeah. this was it. And then the guy pulls out the Quran and he pulls out a quote that says the exact opposite. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like to kill one man is like killing all of mankind. Yeah. And to save one man is to save all mankind. And then in the, sh the dramatization, the guy starts crying. You know, it's like, you've been, he, does, he doesn't even yeah, know his own You've gospel, been fed man. a lie. You know, and you, but you've been fed a lie from an authority figure. Yeah. So you believed it to be true with all your heart. Yeah. And now what's going to happen, Google is the authority figure, right? Or whoever is pervading it. I call it the modern oracle of Delphi. Yeah. <laughs> People go out there asking and Google, and Google determines what's true. Because they can select it too. They can like pick and choose what's yeah, going to be seen. I mean, it's a very... We shouldn't trust Google so much. Yeah. I think with everything with the internet, you always have to have some skepticism, you know? Skepticism is the key. Yeah. Learning how to think. And it's hard. that's why, like, in school, I wish there were a class. In philosophy, they teach it a little bit. They touch on it. Mm -hmm. um, but if I had the superpower to change the educational system, I would add a class in skepticism, you know, in critical thinking, yeah. teaching people how to think for themselves and doubting everything. Right, because once you have people that learn how to think for themselves, you don't have these issues. Right, you can look at something that's on CNN and like, oh, I call BS on that, or you can at least be able to say, well, okay, that might be true. Is that the only true? Yeah. Like, is are is there are there other facts that may outweigh that one? Right, that's the definition of propaganda is selecting yeah. right the pieces of truth that you like. You think Hitler convinced all those people because he was just lying? Yeah. He probably at some point had some truth to what he was saying. Like there's something in there, like you know, that was that was likely to be true. But he focused on that. And everything else was like, okay, that nothing else has happened. There's only this right here, right? And that's what the, that the what the internet does, and public opinion does, because they're able to laser focus on one little thing, and people don't always have the ability to see the other facts that might contradict that. And I think that's, the, that's really the solution. Like coronavirus, whether it's politics, whether it's jiu-jitsu going on in jiu-jitsu, going back to martial arts, there's a lot of BS. Yeah. There's a lot of BS. I think it was, um, 
with the, the uh, ADCC results. And like, I, I, I come across as a hater when I say stuff like this, but it wasn't hate. I was like, oh, no, it's just isn't accurate. But like ADCC, I was like, oh, you know, Henzo's guys had the best results in the history of ADCC. I'm like, pause, not true. And I gave an example of, you know, a team that had, you know, been a lot better in the past, right? Because I, I remember this stuff. Like yeah. I've been following sport for a long time, you know. But, you know, people have this ability to try to, you know, con they, they have this, this, this desire to constantly, you know, rewrite history, you know, or like, you know, give, present the facts that are convenient to their case, qui bono, they benefit from it, right? Yeah. And that right there is something we all have to be, try to, try to correct and try to be aware of. Absolutely. Uh, I think that's a, a good note to close on. Went all over the place today, man. Jesus. Yeah. Our podcast, like, I'm sorry we didn't talk enough, enough jujitsu today, people. <laughs> that was, uh, um, uh, we focused a lot on the coronavirus and, you know, end up going in a tangent about what is truth. But, like, I think that's super important, a super relevant topic for everything we do, not just jiu-jitsu and coronavirus, like, in general. For sure. Know. And uh, we'll just announce it now, so it'll force us to do it. On the next podcast, we're going to start bringing in guests yes. online. So we're going to be calling out people. Um, so it should be pretty entertaining. Uh, me and Dave run out yeah. of things to talk about, basically. <laughs> Unless there's a coronavirus or something like that. <laughs> so we're going to start bringing some, some guests so you guys can hear their opinions. Um, logistically, it's difficult. Like when we started this in Vegas, that was a plan. Like, oh, there's people in Vegas all the time. It would be easy to get people. Trust me, it's not that easy to get them. You know, people are so busy. It's yeah. hard to get them, okay, I need an hour, two hours out of your day so you can come here and, and, and sit down and chat with us. So we decided, we didn't want to do the Skype kind of like, format right when we talked about that we wanted to have the person in here we did it's yeah. been very difficult so we're just going to have guests online and i think the quality is going to be the same as far as the you know it's it'd be, it would have been nice to be face to face because there's something about talking face something that face to face that you can't replicate through the internet i think so but um yeah i think it'll be fun man and we're excited Absolutely. So until then, be safe, be smart, <laughs> stay healthy, sleep tons, and I'll see you guys next time. We will see you next time. Bye. Right. Ciao.